Hi guys, it's Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at some Playmaker actions for the new post-processing stack. Now this is free, it works for Unity 5.5 or higher, and this adds a bunch of different, as it says, post-processing stacks such as anti-aliasing, uh, vignette, or other things such as chrome abrasion or different screen effects. Now, I believe this is becoming the new standard for Unity 2017, I could be wrong, but uh, it is here on the Asset Store for free. As you can see, it has five stars already. And so go ahead and grab this here before we start. Now, the next thing you will need is these, um, I will have the link in the uh, description for this, but this is a post-processing stack utilities by, uh, Kjito. So this is Kjito's uh, post-processing stack utilities. Now, what this does is creates on the fly. So when you're during runtime, it will create a copy of your post-processing stack profile, and it will keep it from being altered during runtime. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you right now, that's fine. We'll figure that out as we go along. I'll give you a little show about how that goes. So you need to download this and you just want to open it up like you would any asset. And uh, once you download it, you'll open up this file here. It's called postprocessingutilities.unitypackage. You'll run that, it'll open up in Unity and install itself. Now, lastly, you will need my Playmaker Actions, which is also on my GitHub. And this was funded by my Patreon account. So if you do use these actions, you like them, you want to see more actions like this, really hop over to my Patreon account, maybe pledge a few dollars to help support the development of more Playmaker actions or the continued development of this one. So as this video is coming out, it's about 80% complete. There's another 20% or so that needs to be done. That being said, you can use it exactly as it is now. Any updates that happen to it won't uh, break your project. They will just add more actions on top of the actions that are here. So right now we have actions for abrasion, anti-alias, uh, AO, bloom, blur, channel mixer, color, grain, LUT, and vignette. So I won't go over every single action, but I'll show you the basics of how to set this up and how to use it. So you can do that right away. So what you'd want to do is just download this into a zip file, put that zip file, I mean unpackage the zip file and put the whole folder into your Unity project. And so I've already gone ahead and done this beforehand and I have it set up here. So I'm just going to remove these just to show you how to do that. So remove component, remove component. Now, so this is just a random scene that I, I have uh, downloaded and put into Unity. There's nothing specific about it. And uh, I already have Playmaker installed, so make sure you have that done as well. Now, on your main camera, you need to um, add the component here for the post-processing. So if you look in your uh, hierarchy here, or sorry, in your projects folder, you should have a post-processing. And if you open up... Um, in utilities, you should have one now also called utilities, which is the post-processing controller. So make sure you have that in there. If not, then you haven't downloaded KGDO's um, script that goes with this. Okay, so just go to your main camera, and then from your main camera, choose add component, and just type post-processing. And uh, not even, so it's post effects behavior, I think. Let's try this. Yep. So it's post-processing behavior is what you want. Now the post-processing behavior, this is not KGDO stuff, but just the one from the asset store. It's like this. And it will come, it'll say none here, and there'll be no options. And you'll think, okay, well, how do I adjust this? And so what it actually needs is a profile that you've set up. So to do that, I'm just going to go into my assets post-processing, and you can put this anywhere. And I'm going to right-click and choose Create and then you're going to choose Post Processing Profile. So I'll just call this uh, Test Profile. And now once you have this open in your inspector, you can see that we have the options to set up this profile. So for example, maybe I want Grain on. And as you can see, turning these off and on don't change anything. 
you need to actually set it up into your camera first. So go back to your camera and then under the profile select this new profile that you created. Mine's under assets. The one I created are called test profile. Double click. And so now you can see that it's been applied. Now sort of the annoying thing about this is during runtime you can't adjust this. So if you wanted to sort of adjust it and see what it looks like it would be a real pain in the butt because you'd have to keep going back to this uh, test profile and try and adjust things here. And um, I guess it sort of does work actually, but still. Okay, so the other weird thing about this is both good and bad. The good and bad thing of this is that if you adjust it now, even while the game is playing and you stop it, it's going to stay where you adjusted. So this works just like shaders. Now, this is maybe fine if you're using this um, just straight out of the box like this, but if we were using it with Playmaker, we want Playmaker to change values while the game is playing. But what happens if someone stops the game, the values would stay the same. So for example, maybe you had the screen uh, normal colored and you use Playmaker to adjust it to be more and more green because, I don't know, you've been poisoned. Well, if they stop the game while everything's green, the next time they turn on the game, it will be green still because it's actually adjusting the actual values of this file, which is not what we want. We want it to go back to the default. So that's why we use KGDO's, KGDO's utilities uh, stack. So how I would uh, suggest to do this is however you want the game to be when you first start, adjust here first in your profile. So if we wanted to have some kind of vignette, you just adjust it to exactly how you want it to be when the game starts, right? So maybe this is, this is how I want it for when the game starts. So it looks like this. And then we go to the camera, we make sure that it's set up. Then we're going to choose to add another component. The component we're going to add this time is the post-processing um, controller. And this is KGDO script, and what it does is when you play during runtime now, you can go ahead and enable something, so such as the vignette, and you can adjust this during runtime. But when you stop, it will go back to the way it was. Okay. So let's just enable these. And if we look at the post-processing behavior, you can see that it says clone. So what it's actually doing, it's cloning this profile so that it doesn't write to the real profile during runtime. <clears throat> okay, so on the camera, let's add an FSM. And now you can see why, my, uh, why I'm talking over here in the corner now so I don't block any of this stuff today. So right click to add FSM and there is a small glitch here that sometimes if you um, add your actions here in this very first state they don't get applied because the controller script has not initiated yet. So if the playmaker initiates and starts before this post-processing controller initiates the changes won't happen. So often what I'll do is just go to the first state and add a wait and you can add an even very small weight, like 0.1. And then add a finish state. So I got a bunch of random ones here. Let's just call this finished. Or whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. And then go into the next state. And then apply your actions here in the second state. Now, if you applied your actions correctly here, you download them from my GitHub, you put them into your project folder, it'll take a few seconds to compile, and if you look way down, you should now have this uh, post-processing aberration, post-processing ambient occlusion, post-processing anti-alias, etc, etc. So they've been broken up um, according to their uh, functions. So I found that if I have them all under one post-processing, they get like super long. So this seems um, much more reasonable this way. So let's, for example, just choose this uh, grain effects and let's change the um, size maybe. So if we go back to the inspector, I'm not sure what the size was. Let's just hit play and see what the size is. 
So we see that the there's some weird stuff going on. Okay, the size is zero right now because it set it to zero. So it goes from zero to three. So let's, um, for example, just set it to three and see what happens. And now you can see the size is set to three. If we set it to one, you can see now it's set to the intensity of one. You can see on the screen. Um, maybe, for example, we want to have like a float from one to the next. So we use the uh, float add. So for the float add, we can make a new variable called um, grain add, maybe it doesn't matter what we call it. Say we want to add 0.2 every frame per second, then don't forget to check every frame on your effect. And let's have a look. And we forgot to, I forgot to use the variable here. Grain add. Okay, let's try again. Okay, now you can see here it's increasing, increasing, increasing. The grain is getting to be more and more. So we can see how we can use Playmaker to animate these different controls. Almost all of them are floats. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you can go through the different actions and see what they do. I'm not going to explain um, how to use post-processing stack. There's a bunch of different uh, tutorials and stuff like that out there, some documentation, so you can check it out. But it, it works pretty much exactly as you would expect. And really, I think the best way to do it is just to turn this on and then turn on uh, KGDO stuff, enable the effect, check out the settings, and just um, just play with them, you know, and see what happens and, and how this affects things for you. So anyway, so this is a very cool way to do it. And uh, like I said, there's actions for um, about 80% right now. Hopefully by the next week or so, I'm a little bit behind than what I had planned. I was hoping to be done by now. I should have uh, all of them up on the GitHub account. But like I said, just don't let this stop you from using them now. You'll just have to uh, refresh later and add some more actions on top of the ones that you have. But it shouldn't break anything. So uh, lastly, don't forget to join us on our Playmaker Slack chat channel. Uh, there's a link down here. So we're just on there chatting about Playmaker stuff, sometimes VR stuff, and whatever else. And that's it.